Good morning again. This month we've been doing a series on Order My Steps, Lord, and it seems appropriate at the beginning of a year that we would take time to kind of reflect and kind of pause and kind of think. Every year I do a Christmas letter to my friends and it gives me an opportunity just to look over the last year and think. And after I've written that letter, it's amazing that all the things that can happen to a person in one year. And so as we start this year, sometimes the thrust in our society is just to keep moving forward. But really there's a real intentional call to be still, to stay still and to stay pause for a moment and just ask God, order my steps. And so on this third week of this series, we're looking at the trustworthy Christian. Today you heard the gospel reading from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. We've been dealing with COVID, and I don't know, after a while, it seems like, was it two years? When, you know, it's starting to feel like one really kind of big fuzz. But last year, I, I never forget this doctor um, did a videotape of herself while she was in the hospital, and she talked about how she was being treated in the hospital. Maybe you guys recall her. Her name was Dr. Susan Moore, and she was right over in Indiana um, after scans came back on her showing that she was having problems breathing. It was hard for her to get medicine, and she felt like it was hard for her to be treated fairly. And so she did this, um, she did this video. They released her from the hospital, even though she was complaining, and within 24 hours, she was actually admitted to another hospital, and within two days, she died. And so the video kind of went viral, because here was this lady complaining about she wasn't being cared for, and that she wasn't being treated fairly, and that even though she had signs and symptoms, she did not receive the care that she thought she should receive. That hospital went on to do a deeper investigation and said, while they think their care did not lead to her death, there could have been more humane treatment while she was in the hospital. What stayed with me and what has stayed with me through the whole COVID is the whole degree of distrust that exists among people. There's a lot of distrust of others that is happening in our country. One former Chicagoan said, I had to leave this place because it was stressing me out. I always felt like I was looking over my shoulders, always wondering if someone is out to get me, always alert to crime and harm, never being able to let my own defenses down, distrust of our government, distrust of our elected officials. They say what sounds good when they're running, but then they get in office. Distrust of our associates sometimes, distrust of other human beings. Real or imagined, it can get weary and rightfully so, the distrust that we have of each other. I was so glad, and I know I wasn't alone this week when the public schools opened up on Wednesday. I keep saying jokingly, I was willing to camp out Tuesday night just so my child could go to school on Wednesday. But to look at CTU and CPU and Mayor Lightfoot was quite exhausting. In the crossfire were parents and children who suffered, parents who were not expecting to be out of school, parents who stayed up to 11 to see if school would be open the next day and the next day. You know, CTU takes the righteous road and asserts that it was all about safety for their teachers, while CPS and Mayor Lightfoot also take the righteous road and say it was concern for the children and it was concern for families. And in between their dealings is a lot of distrust for each other and people picking their sides and wedging their heels in because we do not plan on moving. This week in an old speech re-aired that Mayor Lightfoot had said before, these are her words, our city needs to heal and it cannot get there unless we invest in our people, all of them, invest in people and places. And then I looked at the comments and it was like, wow, there's a lot of people that really distrust our mayor and how different it looked from just two or three years ago. This is where we enter the biblical text today, and I've read this text many times, but this time saw a little something different. Right at the heels of Jesus' birth, Jesus' dad is being asked to sign up for the census, which was the implementation by the Roman rule of oppressive taxes on the Jews. So in other words, they would tax the people for people and their family, and they would tax them for property, So this whole business of taxing has been around for quite some time. 
There is some discrepancy about when the census actually occurred, and we already know the Bible is not a history text, but it is a story involving the Israelite people. This text places the first sentence, the first census ever when Joseph and Mary were to become first-time parents. And Joseph has to register his family. And there's this heaviness among everyday people, such as Mary and Joseph, because these taxes make life harder. The rich get richer and the poor are more strapped. There's a real distrust of the government. The census itself, a penetrating symbol of oppressive Roman power, serves as a reminder to those in subordination what is required of them and how they feel as a conquered people. It is not easy to trust people or to trust the government or to even trust corporation when it feels like they have their foot on your back. During Martin Luther King weekend, it seems appropriate to remember it is okay for us to question and to examine rules and policies that strip people of their civil rights and their pursuit of happiness. Clearly, there is a reason why people do not trust each other. There is a reason why some folks are not getting vaccinated. There are often other people yelling, read the science, but get it. There are some people that feel distrust. There is a reason why the Jews were resentful toward Roman rule, and it all has something to do with trust. And we can shame or ridicule others, but it doesn't address the deeper issue of erosion of trust in our country. And that distrust, it spreads to the church. Guess what? <laughs> we get a part of it too. Molestation of boys and girls happened on our watch. The LGBT community got condemned to hell on our watch. All kinds of people were judged in the church that just did not measure up on our watch. Why are you giving that man or woman all your money on our watch? And I get this line a lot, and tell me if you've heard it. I don't trust organized religion. Get that line a lot. The world does not trust churches. The world does not trust us. Folks have stopped attending. One lady says this to me, the reality is some of the most kind and genuine people I have ever met, I met in the church. On the other hand, some of the most petty, catty, gossiping people I ever met occupy the same space. They sing in the same choir, serve on the same usher board, the, real, the reality is I became exhausted with weeding out who to trust and who not to. So it's easier just to stay home on Sunday. I think the church in general, whether we like to hear this or not, has some work to do. I think the church has some real work to do. We are clearly in trouble for a host of different reasons. But there's a wonderful opportunity to reflect and pray and ask God, what next? As the church, we can start a new chapter, but we have to look at the chapters we've lived so far. We are likely to repeat the same mistakes if we don't. Maybe we need a demolition project. Let us be true to our words. Let us honor our commitments and not make promises we can't keep. Let us try to hold back on being judgmental and mean and petty. Let us use the New Testament rule of when there is offense to first go to the person and not the telephone. Let us make decisions carefully and prayerfully and not in the heat of the moment. Let us always be wedded to the truth and the light and to those who have been pushed to the margins, to those who are hurting and harm. Let us be trustworthy Christians. One associate said to me that her friend told her he was called to the ministry and she knew her experience of ministers and what she thought of them. And so her distrust radar went up. And so she decided to take off all her clothes, which was a pretty, pretty, pretty brazen move. She knew what was coming next. What shocked her was when her friend looked at her and told her to put her clothes back on. That's when she said she knew he was called. Not a very high expectation there of ministers. In order for her to trust, she needed to know her friend had control over his sexual appetite. 
Even though that story was told some years ago, it stayed with me how little people trust the church, how little people trust their ministers. People don't trust us. They've been harmed and they've been hurt by the church. I'm not sure the church has done a proper apology. In my secular work, I worked for an awesome youth social service agency, and we had teams, and every week those teams would get together, and we would go on retreats every year. And one year we did this team-building exercise, and there was this one activity called trust. You had to turn your back to a person so you could not see them, and then you fall back trusting that they would catch you. This activity was not easy at all. It took some coaching for people to actually trust themselves to fall back and that somebody would catch them. But what a wonderful experience it was to be caught. It's not always easy to trust, but it's important to be able to trust somebody with your stuff. It's important for us to know someone has our back. Trust comes when people can see that we are trying. Trust comes when folks can see our light shining. Trust comes with the way we handle ourselves because someone's always watching. Trust is about transparency of our lives and people seeing we are genuine in our love for them. Then they can fall back. And there are still some folks that are willing to give the church a chance. There are still some people that believe in the church, that believe this is a space of healing. This is a space where we can do some real good in the world. Years ago, a friend of mine went to see a group she liked in Grant Park. It was packed, but she had managed to get a seat up close where the railings are, where she could sit down. So she drove up on um, King Drive, parked her car, and got on the number three bus. You know how it is. You want to get a little closer to downtown, but you don't want to pay for the absorbent parking spot. And so she got on the bus, she got off, she had enough time, she sat down in her seat, she felt comfortable. You know when you get somewhere early enough that you're not rushing, took a look around, took in the environment and all that was going on. And then the person seated next to her showed up. And she says, this lady sat her stuff down, she had been shopping, and said, I gotta go to the bathroom. And she turned to her, a total stranger, and said, will you watch my stuff? Well, she said yes to the lady, and she did watch the stuff, but she was just surprised. She was surprised that this stranger who didn't know her could ask her to watch her stuff and totally trust that she would do it. She wondered if there was something about her demeanor or something written on her face or somehow the love of Christ was just exuding and this lady trusted her. Whether a stranger or someone, we know it's important for us to trust others with our stuff. But the real responsibility is to be the kind of person that folks can trust to be the kind of people folks will trust with their stuff. I passed by this restaurant the other day and I hadn't thought of really trying it, but there was a sign up that gave me something to th think about. <clears throat> There's this big sign hanging from the restaurant. And do you know what it said? It said, under new management. Under new management suggests that there have been some major changes and that the way things were run before and by whom have changed. You expect a different experience when you see under new management. Maybe in 2022, let us consider ourselves, United Church of High Park, under new management. We have some real work to do to build people's confidence in us. Yesterday, I was walking by the church, and um, I don't know if you guys know this, we have this uh, congregation, Cornerstone Baptist, which really comes to our church every weekend and, you know, gives a whole message and tells people the wages of sin or death. And I mean, it's really quite astounding. And so yesterday I was out talking to someone and I thought, well, why don't these people do this message at their church? <laughs> why are they here? Because I don't know that that's the message that we want to send. And by the way, no, I don't think it's the message. But the person outside talking to me saying, said, if I didn't know who went to this church, I would think that this was the message that this church was giving. And that doesn't make us probably feel all that trustworthy in the community. And so I think in 2022, I don't know what we say to those people on our corner. 
but maybe it's time for us to think about what we want to say, <clears throat> what we want to say on our lawn, not what we don't want people to do, but what we want to say about who we are, about who we are, about who we are in this world that might build people's confidence or say, hey, you know, one of the things um, we thought we noticed is when we put up a sign that said we're LGBTQ friendly, that that says something to people when they walk by. But what are some other things that we want to say about ourselves that might cause people to feel like they can trust this space? Let us, under new management, walk humbly in this world and walk wedded to justice. Let us, under new management, lift and help folks up and not talk and be so quick to judge others. Let us, under new management, increase our prayer time and decrease our gossip time. Let us, under new management, be good Samaritans that when we see someone on the road in trouble, we help to restore them and do whatever we can to help them have a second chance. Always believing if we're going to err in any way in the good in people and the power of God to make a total makeover in people's lives. Let us, under new management, be cheerleaders that believe in humanity's potential to do good. Let us, under new management, work together because the work of the church, it requires all hands, not just some, but it requires all of our hands and our spirits and our hearts and our energy on deck. There's a real urgency for God's people to really show up, to really be visible, and to demonstrate that we are trustworthy Christians. Amen.